Here at UDS, we talk about a bunch of different things. I mean, we have a YouTube channel for video games, one for music, one for films. We'd make one about sandwiches if we had the time, and believe me, I've tried. Mm. Mm, so good. And that's why when we find something that crosses multiple mediums, genres, or interests, we love to check it out. And that's why, after seeing Iron Maiden live in London the other week, I was reminded of the game Ed Hunter. This weird footnote in my childhood game collection that honestly probably isn't even worth bringing up in 2023, but this is my YouTube channel, and damn it, if I want to waste my time, I can waste it however I want. Let's all go somewhere in time, the mid-90s to be exact, to start our story. So this period found Iron Maiden in a pretty weird place. Struggling to keep their former relevance, with long-standing vocalist Bruce Dickinson being replaced by the, frankly, less good Blaze Bailey, and their style of classic horn-raising metal falling out of favour to the burgeoning new metal scene. And I wonder how that went. Right. But not ones to simply fade away into obscurity, the Maiden lads started toying with the idea of releasing a video game. And evidence of this can be found all the way back in 1996, when, on the cover of their greatest hits album Best of the Beast, there appeared a little sticker. This read, Available soon. Melt. Eddie's own state-of-the-art 3D game. And for anyone wondering, this is literally the best picture I could find of a copy of the CD featuring the sticker. So I'm not exactly sure how many copies were printed with this cover, but it definitely proves that something was in the works. The only thing is, apparently it was bad. Like, really bad. Even singer Blaze called it crap. His exact words, by the way. So with not much more than a teaser announcement, the Iron Maiden game was cancelled with no knowledge of its genre, format, or basically anything. But much like the band's famous zombie mascot Eddie, it just wouldn't stay dead. The project, now named Ed Hunter, was rebooted by Synthetic Dimensions and much more enthusiasm from the band. Founding member Steve Harris said, It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. I don't get shocked very often, but Ed Hunter was so good. It's like walking into a 3D version of the Summer in Time album cover. Like going into the bar at the Ruskin Arms, only full of aliens and stuff. You go in and we'll be like holograms playing in the corner, or sitting at the table gambling. And then you've actually got the game itself, which is like this big shoot 'em up chase through space and time to catch Eddie. It's brilliant. Big words from a man who definitely didn't have a financial stake in the success of the game. But the thing is, of all the metal bands to work on a video game, Iron Maiden made the most sense. Aside from maybe Kiss, but anyone who calls them a metal band is clearly only judging that on the looks. I mean, come on. But seriously, all of Maiden's music makes you feel like you're going into battle. And there's already an iconic character in Eddie that you can base everything around. So if I weren't more than just a babbling baby at this point in the 90s, you could colour me excited. So, eventually in July of 1999, to coincide with Bruce Dickinson's first tour since rejoining the band, Ed Hunter released as a three-disc package, mixing another Greatest Hits collection with the game itself. Now, I've waffled on about everything around the game, except the game itself, so I should probably do that now. In Ed Hunter, players assume the role of the eponymous protagonist, a self-proclaimed headhunter tasked with tracking down various incarnations of Eddie throughout time and space. From ancient Egypt to futuristic cityscapes, you'll go through a plethora of different levels, all based on the various covers from Maiden's discography. So what do you actually get to do? Well, it's ostensibly a 3D on-the-rail shooter, where you'll have to blast your way through armies of hooligans, monsters, and eventually, the four horsemen of the bloody apocalypse to secure your target. Uh? And the reason I waited this long to talk about the gameplay is because in terms of the raw gameplay, there really isn't much more to it than that. The real reason you check it out is because of the Maiden theming, which don't get me wrong, is on point. You get the music, the album concepts, and frankly, that's enough to make up for some pretty shallow gameplay. On the other hand, this was 1999. There's no getting past the fact that this was after GoldenEye had released on the N64, and even longer since Doom had shown us what could be done with the FPS genre. With that in mind, it already felt dated, even at the time. Sure, the gameplay is solid, but it gets really repetitive. 
So like I said, if you're not into Maiden, it's just not going to be for you. But with all of that in mind, you got to admit, it's just fun to see a band try something like this. I'd always rather see bonkers projects like this than have bands that just sit back on a well-established formula. And it got me thinking about other bands and artists who could make the move into video games like this. Are there any that you'd like to see do a crossover? Please let me know in the comments below. I would genuinely love to read your thoughts. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe for plenty more videos on all things gaming. And don't forget to check out our sister channel UDS Music for interviews with fans and all manner of other musical fun. But until then, my name is Tom, this has been UDS, and we'll see you next time.